There we go, resume recording. Okay, all right. And so we are recording this as well. Uh, we'll have a recording of the video available on our YouTube channel at the end of it. Um, so I'm Matt Newpin. Um, I'm the program manager for MathShare. I'm a former high school science teacher. Also wearing my MathShare shirt here too. Oh, I gotta get my water bottle. So I've been doing for all of our webinars. If you ask a question, oh, there we go. All right, Lisa. Um, and, and yeah, I'll, I'll let Lisa introduce yourself too. But if you have any questions, um, I'm gonna be writing down everybody's names. So I should have your email then too from the sign up. And so if you ask a question during the webinar, I will mail you or I'll email you to get your mailing address. I will send you one of the mass share um, stickers of every student learns in their own way in different forms of accessibility. However, the Braille is not, it's, it's just a picture Braille. It's not really, um, we still haven't tried out if we could do like a, like a 3D printing pen on there. I'm sure there's a way we could, we can emboss it. Um, but all right, so Lisa, I'm gonna let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Matt. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Lisa Waters Vern. I am the Director of Educational Research and Development here at Benetech for products such as MathShare. And so um, we've been working very hard to get MathShare out there and ready for you to be using. Um, while Matt does his presentation, though, I'm going to actually take a quiet set, step back and I can answer some of your questions in the Q&A if they're individual questions. Otherwise, I'll help Matt at the end uh, make sure that we get all your questions answered. So if you have any questions for us, please, as Matt said, put it in the Q&A and we want to make sure we can get those answered during this call. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Um, all right, we're gonna move to our next slide here. Um, all right, well, so like I was saying, I taught high school science for 12 years. Um, and I decided to start off with the like, the more challenging route of, I'm going to start off by teaching at a sober high school. So all my students struggled with addiction. Um, and it was great because I, I was able to work really closely one-on-one -on -one with my students but there's a lot of different needs that they had. Um, and over the course of the 12 years, I primarily just focused on students that for some reason, traditional education was not meeting their needs. And so I taught in a lot of alternative schools. Um, I taught at a charter school that had prime, like all, mostly just immigrant, uh, st immigrant family students. Um, and it was a really great experience being able to work one-on-one -on -one with the students but so many of them, the reason why they had become my students was because they had so many different learning challenges. Um, some of them were undiagnosed learning disabilities. Um, other things were because of different family issues at home made school really difficult. Um, for other students, they were out of school for a while. Now they're coming back to school. And so they were like four or five year grade levels below where they should be. And they needed a lot of extra support. And the traditional education tools don't meet their needs, just the same as students that have, um, you know, that have a learning disability or physical cognitive disability, um, traditional things don't really meet their needs. And, you know, everybody that's on this call, we all know that really a lot of that goes into just like universal design, like, right, like making things accessible, making things accessible for students with disabilities is going to make them more accessible for everybody as well. Um, and for myself also on the personal level, um, so I've got two kids and my oldest has cerebral palsy. She's nonverbal. Um, she uses a wheelchair and a walker for getting around school, extremely social, loves to interact with people. But that independent piece, independence piece is something that is all is becoming more and more of a conflict issue because she wants to do as much as she can independently. She's in third grade. Um, but she can't do everything independently. And if she's given something like a paper worksheet, she's going to get really frustrated and probably not even start to begin with. Because even though she can write, it's going to go really slow. It is going to be very time consuming for her. It's going to be frustrating because she'll forget how to write certain things or she'll write certain numbers or letters backwards. It's just a slow process. Her mind is going so much faster than what she can say, than what she can write. And so at the same time, she doesn't want an EA because she wants that independence and she knows what she wants to do, but she can't convey that information. And so when it comes to math, it 
we're just kind of at the beginning stages for that. And in talking with teachers over this last year um, that are using MathShare, I'm discovering more and more of so much of that because right, like as we're, we're now we're all doing remote learning and everything is digital. And so, you know, a lot of students still are stuck with like these like worksheets and stuff like that. But when it comes to math, it becomes really frustrating because you have to do so many different things. And so with my students, they would get so frustrated with it because it, you know, you run into so many different kinds of issues. And so some of the students or teachers that I was talking to, like they would talk about how, like, right, like my students want to be independent, but math is really visual. So I need to be able to explain to my students what it is that they're seeing and what are these key pieces because the students can't do these things independently because of vision issues. The writing issue is such a big problem. I'm going to go to my next slide just to like show you what I mean. But like, right, this is not what our worksheets look like, or the finished worksheets look like from our students. I think, you know, this is a very clearly written thing. This is something my daughter will never be able to write down. She will just never be able to write it out like this. And you can see the amount of space that's there. You have to cram this in. And there's no place to explain. So if you want to go back and erase, you can see the eraser lines right there. It just gets more and more messy, right? The anxiety and the frustration levels in our students build up so quickly when we're trying to work in different formats that are not ideal for them or something that they're going to be able to be successful for. And that's really why we created MassShare is to be able to help with the students, to be able to help the requirements of being able to write a lot of stuff in really tiny places and write little tiny exponents on different things and being able to hear the math right a lot. Maybe we can understand it if we're hearing it, but if we're not hearing it, we're trying to read it, that's a totally different thing. That was like when I was working with all my students, um, all my ESL students and where it's like, if I could say it to them, they understood it. But if they had to read it and then process that, like that was a non-starter for them. Like I had to record videos explaining these things for them. Otherwise they couldn't be successful. Do that as teachers, we can't sit down and work with each student and now with remote learning, we can't do these things. And then the cognitive processing, processing that's gonna be required for all these things, like it, it becomes a lot. So this is what students oftentimes are expected to do, but it is not realistic. It's not going to happen. It's not an issue of willingness or grit or anything like that. It's just they are not going to be able to because of a wide range of reasons. And so that's, you know, and, and so I want to share this story. This is from a special ed teacher in Minnesota um, that I've been talking with. Um, and so I was able to go in and kind of like, and, and I wanted to learn how it is that she was using MassShare with her elementary students. Um, Cause mostly I just been talking with middle school and high school teachers. And so she shared, of course, like, right. Like it, so my, my daughter has cerebral palsy. And so it was a very like personal connection here. But, right, so, so she shared about how one of her students, fifth grade boy with cerebral palsy, was having trouble holding a pencil and writing small enough. And he now, and he works at a slower pace because of that. And she kind of showed me that about the same issue of his mind can go through it very quickly, but they that to his teacher was going to be a very slow process and, and much less, right, right? Like this is a fifth grade boy. He doesn't want to sit in class with a special ed teacher in the general ed classroom with a special ed teacher, having her write these things down, right? He wants to be like all of his classmates. And so when he got mass share, it changed how he was using it. So he didn't have to rely on the staff member to describe and he could go through in a general education classroom and keep up pace with math. And I love that because now, right, we're using technology to deliver that dream of students are able to work more independently and accomplish what their peers are doing. And I also love because math share is something that we're going to show you about how it's like, right, all these accessibility things we're going to be talking about today, those things are helping a large chunk of our general ed our typical students also, but the finished work is going to look the same, whether a student is, is um, blind and using a screen reader 
or if they're just simply your typical student. Their finished work is going to be looking the same and they can both access the same finished work. And so that again is delivering like, right, so it's not even about like creating the work now, but it's that other piece. And our vision for math share now, right? We've got these students, we need to help them out where we're going to be going with all of mass share like why did we even create mass share our whole goal is to just simply have it be that inclusive tool that's going to help students not only with creating their work like working through it like, you know writing out their steps but that thought process of how am i going to solve this problem here's the equation i need to solve how am i going to actually solve this problem now because that's that's really the big piece of it is being able to do that and the more that students can show their thought process as they're working through it, then their parents at home are able to look at that and help their child with anything that they ran, the thing that they're having trouble with. The teachers can look at that and understand it instead of just being like, oh, X isn't equal to two, it's equal to 22. You can now, the educators can now look at that and understand where the student kind of got stuck and provide that feedback so the student then is gonna be more successful. So our goal for today, I've been saying accessibility. That's this broad, crazy term that means that's extremely loaded, right? Because there's a lot of things that go into that. So I want to emphasize right now that for accessibility, we are not saying that math share is accessible for all learners right now. That is what we are working towards and we will forever be working towards making it more and more accessible. But I'm going to be going over some highlights of accessibility that's built into MathShare, um, some of the upcoming accessibility releases that we're going to have, um, and then also where you can find more information, because this is going to be a short webinar, um, and then how does you can kind of get started with sharing MathShare with other people. So for this, we're going to be talking, this is kind of a list of all of our accessibility features, but I'm go just going to be going through these primary ones. Um, and I apologize, I forgot to share this slide ahead time but i will be sharing these slides with everybody afterwards um so if you need access to it this is in google slides we'll be going through it so with these features the first one we're going to talk about is the speech to text so what it does it transcribes the typing it out um right because there is not only the physical part but then there's also the cognitive part of it. it's much easier to say it than it is to think about it and now how am I going to communicate with my hands, type that out. So this is going to be helping students that are struggling with writing and typing or spelling. So for this demonstration, part, I'm going to go to mathshare.benetech.org. Mathshare is a free tool. It will always be free to teachers and students. Um, we have Google and Microsoft sign in for this. If you sign in, what's great about that is that then all of your work is going to be saved to your dashboard. Now that works the same for students and it also works for teachers. Students can also create their own problem sets, but I'm going to go ahead and just simply open up one of our example, one of our problems. So I've got these pre-made sets here. I'm going to open up one of these and I'm just going to go to this first one here of three X plus 11 is equal to 11. Now for this one, this is the dictate tool. So I'm down in the math editor on the right hand side. Um, so this is our equation in the left side. And then on the right hand side is where students can explain their work. And that's where you can type it out. But what I'm going to do here is I need to move the 11 over to the other side. So I'm going to say, I'm going to subtract 11 from the left side and subtract it from the right side so that then I only have X and the number on the left side. And then I could go through and actually do that work. So that's the dictation tool, um, which is a fantastic tool for a lot of students. And again, I always think back to like my ESL students and where it's like, <laughs> When I, the looks on their faces, especially for elementary students, when I showed them like Google Docs built in transcription tool, there was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I used it with my first, with my first grader too. Um, cross out, calculate and clean up. These things as a science teacher, I freaked out about when I saw the very early alpha version of math share. And I'm going to show you how this works, right? So I said that I'm going to be subtracting 11 from both sides. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say minus 11 right there, I type that out. Um, and then same thing over here, I'm going to do minus 11. So, well, this is a horrible math problem. This isn't gonna work out, right? This is a poorly written equation, but that's okay. Um, right, so with this one, cross out, we have over here is the cross out, cross out and replace. 
and then calculate tools. I'm going to show you how these different things work, right? So 11 minus 11 is going to be zero. So for this one, I can just simply cross this out. I know this is going to be zero. Now let's say for this one, then what we could do is we could then use this cross out tool. So I could now say, you select the cross out and replace one and then type in zero. Another option is this calculate tool. What's nice with the calculate tool is that if you, you highlight the different numbers that you want it to calculate, and it's going to do basic algebra for you. Um, so if it's involving variables, it's not going to work out. But what's nice here is that this helps students kind of go through a couple of different steps. So I'm going to press the calculate one. And math can get messy sometimes. But we want to help our students work through that problem, right? We cross this out. We don't want to erase it. I would always tell students, like, don't erase it. It's like, but it gets really messy. It was like, I know it's messy, but watch this. I'm now going to select add step because we have our math and our explanation done. And this is a beautiful thing for a lot of our students because math share automatically, this cross out shows you that these numbers have now been eliminated. They've either been replaced with something else, but then Masher does this cleanup step. So we have the step two, but then underneath step two is this cleanup one where it has a little note of cleanup. And now it has just what was left over after those items were crossed out. So now we have three X's equal to zero. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go back to now. All right, so we got our next one here, right? So these are fantastic. So why is this such a big deal? Students, some students really need those visual cues on what's happening within that. If we just simply erased that stuff, then sort of like, okay, where did they go? By having them crossed out, now students have that visual cue of they were crossed out because of the subtraction. And now from the new line, we have it very, we have it very neatly printed out of what it is. And that kind of reduces that visual clutter that can really trip up some students, myself included. It becomes a lot. Um, all right, now this next part is explaining your work and your steps. This is such a basic piece of mass share. It's really over, easy to overlook about how it is that this is really accessibility because what mass share does is it's allowing students to explain each step and keeping track of that problem solving process. So as we are working through each of these steps, I'm now going to divide this by three. I'm gonna divide this by three divide both sides by three. And I'm now going to add that step. Now with this one, I did those things, but here now I'm going to use this cross out and replace. Calculate won't work because it has a variable. And I'm now going to say, hey, like, nope, that's just simply X. And this one, because it's a poorly written out math problem, becomes zero because zero divided by anything is going to be zero. And finish it. And I'm going to add that step and it cleans it up now as just simply X is equal to zero. This is the huge part. So we've gone through four steps. Each step we have our cleanup spots wherever appropriate with the crossing out. And we have this dedicated place to explain the work. This is very valuable because the explanation part can be used as a student explaining why they did their work, but they can also use this as a place to plan out what am I going to do with my work? Like, why do I want to do this? Or what do I need to do? I need to think through how am I going to start off with this problem? So at the beginning, um, with this prompt is predict whether the solution be positive, negative, or zero, or solve for X, um, and then solve for X. It kind of gives students a place to be able to think through what do I need to do to solve this problem? And the explanation part is something that is unique to math share because pretty much every other math tool that's out there focuses just on the solving the math, not that problem solving process. And students need that place to be able to think through it. It's not just show your work for the sake of busy work, it's so that you can think through these things because if students are getting distracted or trying to like work through this, they need that way. Now it's also fantastic because I'm going back to then some of the teacher stories of where I'm sure many of you do. You have these incredibly bright students that just get the math, but they can't explain it to their classmates. That communication piece is going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult for the classmates maybe to understand the student. Um, they get the math and they can find some really, you know, it's like, right, like twice exceptional students, like they can understand this and find really interesting ways of solving a problem. And in their heads, they have a really clear explanation as to why, 
But if you ask them to get up in front of the classroom to explain it to everybody, they can't do that. This is something of where by breaking it down the step by step, you're, we're making it much more finite. And then those students could then share their work with their classmates and now help their classmates understand how they got to a pro answer to a problem that maybe other students were really struggling with. And so it's a really powerful way by having those step-by-step -step parts. All right. Now the last one I'm gonna share here is the adjustable letter spacing, line height, and font, and changing the font size. So why we added these in, and these are underneath the personalization settings, I'll show you. Um, but so what this does is it just simply changes the letter spacing, which is the distance between the letters, the distance between individual lines of text, and then it also changes the style of the font. Of Some students, um, students sometimes will benefit or be able to read it easier um, with different types of fonts. And so that's going to be helping students that would otherwise have difficulty reading, um, particularly students with dyslexia. And the way we get to that is, I'm gonna go back to all of our problems right now, save those changes. What else is going okay. Um, under the, so I'm going to select my user profile icon in the upper right corner and then personalization option. Um, this is something that we're going to be adding a lot to. Um, but for right now, what we have is we have these different options of the changing the font style. So I can then select, um, I'm going to choose the open dyslexic font. Um, we can increase the font, the line height, and then also the letter spacing. Um, that I'm just going to go ahead and leave as is. I'm going to save it. Um, which is it? And then I'm also going to show you of, so the, there's a reason why, so I reloaded there and it applied the setting. Um, there's a reason why we don't have font size built in as a personalization setting for mass share. And the reason is because chances are if a student needs the font size to be larger, they're using the browser ability to do that. And so on my MacBook, I'm pressing command and plus to increase the font size. And so if students already have that, we want students like, right, chances are they're already doing that through their browser. And so MassShare is going to just simply use that setting that they've already done within the browser and then respect that setting so that we're just using what the browser does instead of an additional separate setting that they would have to go into. And so you can see if MassShare then kind of um, adjusted um, a couple of different things about the interface so that it works with that larger text. And so they're able to go through and then work with those things. All right, a couple of things because I'm sure people already have some questions about what about screen reader and braille and switch access because these are pretty significant accessibility needs, especially when it comes to math. We have some compatibility with these different things. Now, when I say it's a limited release, that means because we're still developing all of the functionality and usability for those different users. So some screen reader users will find MassShare to be accessible, but it's not going to work for all the different um, uh, tools. It's not going to work for all the different kinds of settings. We are, and all the usability pieces that we want to have in there aren't necessarily in there right now, but we are working on expanding that out. So MassShare is accessible with some screen readers, but it is not at the level where we want to say it is fully accessible with screen readers because we're working on some of that functionality and usability. Same thing goes with the refreshable Braille displays and switch access. Right now, because as we've been developing MassShare, we have had these needs in mind from the very beginning um, and we're working with developers who that's their area of specialty. And so already you can go through, everything has keyboard combinations. Everything is a tabable interface. We're using the different headings and things like that so that a lot of these tools already work because of how it's being developed, but we're doing more as we're going along those will be coming out this fall and this winter. Um, and so we're continuously releasing updates when we get to the point of where it's like, hey, like this is exactly kind of like what we're looking for for minimum standard. Um, we'll have full announcements with those things and then documentation also for the users so that we can then kind of give some guidance of these are the different types of software and versions and settings that we've tested it with and that we would recommend for using with MassShare. Coming this summer, um, so we have a number of features that we're, that we're working on right now that are looking at supporting students with learning disabilities. 
Um, those are going to be released um, in a rolling way throughout the summer, and we will have monthly newsletters that will kind of talk about these different releases and what new features there are. Um, and we'll have different webinars based on these different releases as well. So one of the big ones is gonna be text-to-speech, and that'll be synchronizing the highlighting as it's going along, so students can just select a button and it'll read it aloud. Customizing that tabbed math tools, and so that's where you have all those little math tools um, underneath the editor, being able to turn that into a tab system that you can then customize compatibility, mobile devices, um, and then that personalization settings that I showed you, that is going to be expanding quite a bit. And we're also going to be releasing a quick setting so that students can quickly make changes because their students' accessibility needs can change throughout the day, right? Like first hour and second hour is a completely different experience than fifth and sixth hour. Like anybody that's ever taught in a classroom knows that like, it's like night and day sometimes of like, what our thinking abilities are. And so as we're more tired towards the end of the day, the same thing are going to happen with our accessibility needs. If some students are gonna have, some of those needs are going to be changing, whether that's the speaking speed, um, things like that are gonna be changing. Um, and then the fall and winter is when we will then have some significant um, things, especially that documentation, when it comes to the screen readers, braille and switch access. So, I've gone through a lot of these different things that are in master right now that make me really excited and wishing that I could use these things with my students right now in the classroom. Um, but so much of this is for all of you that are on the call that are on the webinar that are going to be watching this later on the recordings. We want, if you're excited about these things, we want your help in getting involved with these things. And that can be of helping us with testing out these different things, giving us feedback on some of these features like, hey, like this worked for my student and this would also be really helpful for them for these reasons. Um, or like I have a student that's using a switch device, I'd be happy to be able to help, to help test and give some feedback on it. Um, so if you sign, so you can either fill out the form that I've linked here um, and I'll be sending this information later on, we'll have it in the video description as well on YouTube. Um, you can also, if you sign up for Master, if you haven't already, you will receive regular updates from us of our monthly newsletters that will have more information from there. Um, so you can contact us at mathshare at benetech.org um, and then also follow us on Twitter at Mathshare. And these resources I'll share later on, but just simply they're on the last page here. Um, and this link goes to a full list of accessibility features um, that I kind of went through that kind of explains what it does and then also who are the students that it's going to be benefiting we will talk in there we kind of talk about some students like right like so if they if if student has dyslexia but we also really try to focus on the needs not really the label because whatever is going to be helping one student with a certain diagnosed disability there's a lot of other students that are going to have the same kind of needs but maybe they just don't have that diagnosis or at that level but they're still going to be benefiting from it in different ways um so I have been talking a lot here. Let's hear some of these different kinds of questions that people might have um, at this point. And take a drink of water too. And then also if there's anything that, so I'm gonna go back to our full list of um, accessibility features. Um, if people have questions about any of these things, then we can also go over those. Um, I'm continuing to record right now so that then anything that we cover in the Q&A will then also be in the recorded video. I'm not seeing many questions right now. Are we got any questions yet, Lisa? I'm going to emphasize in our last video all. chat, not yet, maybe we'll have, did everybody asked their questions before. Hey, Jake, um, you will be getting a mass share sticker with all of your questions. So, so Jake, I'll, and I'll answer Jake's question real quick. Um, Jake asked, what does the bold mean in the feature list here? Really for this slide that uh, you're referring to, it's just the topics that Matt wanted to cover on this particular call. Um, there's nothing other than that, but um, yeah, thanks for the question. And then, Joy also asked, could you briefly explain the type of word problem support MathShare provides? Yes. Um, so when I say word, word problem, um, the 
I'll go to some of our example ones here. Um, go with my distance rate and time one. Um, by that, what we mean is that you're able to add in a pretty long prompt for the students. And so if I open up this first one here, what happens with mass share is that the whole prompt, the prompt and the equation is automatically added as step one. And so when students are working through it, um, now for this next step, as a student, I can then delete what I have in the my work area and now start thinking through like, okay, like what is my, how am I going to take what's in the word, uh, the, you know, the instructions, word problem, and then actually now start putting this out into my math. Um, and so we purposely tried, wanted to make sure that you were able to put in, type out words and text that you need into the equation editor as well as into the prompt so that you can have these kind of more complex problems that students then can work on as they're going through it. Okay, thanks Matt. We have another question on, will we be adding color options for our colorblind students? Um, so we've received a, a couple of different things about that. We have that in our accessibility list. Um, I don't believe we have it on our roadmap for, um, for the fall, uh, for, through the summer and the fall. Um, but we've, we've kind of talked through that a little bit about like kind of like different presets um, and things that people might need. Um, there is a way to color code the different things as you're working through. So students can change the colors of math on here. So now I can change that to red, um, but that is something that we are kind of working on. Math share, with the way that we've developed math share, if the student is using um, a browser plugin or um, a setting on their computer to change the color and the contrast, math share will adopt that and work with it. Um, but we know that there's kind of more additional needs and same thing like when we have like the synchronized highlighting um, of making sure that right like the synchronized highlighting is something that students are able to see and also won't wash out with different color combinations. So um, I say if we know that that's a need, um, but we don't have it on our roadmap through this fall. But Sandy, if you or others but have the I same question and you know and feel that this is something that needs to be prioritized this is a great opportunity for you to connect with Matt and to to share that information because Matt will actually work with the product team to make sure that the things that need to be prioritized are prioritized and I think Matt is either oh you were either taking a big drink or you're frozen for a second I have one more question from Laura um, would you please enter the hyperlink for the accessibility features into the Q&A so that we can easily click on it yes all right, I'm gonna put that into the, the chat here. That was a very good idea to put it into the chat. That would make a lot of sense. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, and so with this, I want to add to it, like for the doc that I'm linking to, um, this one will be updating over time. So whenever we do have a new update to it, we're going to be updating this document. So you won't have to worry about having an outdated one. Um, at the top of it, we also have the date at which it was updated. Um, so um, that will kind of be continuously... And this would be something that people could access through the math share side, correct? They don't need to keep a, a tab to this link. They could find it on our, you know, by going through math share specifically. Correct. Um, so right now I'm on math share on the math share dashboard um, and I'm going to select the help menu at the upper right. And if you select accessibility, it's going to then open up that document um, as well. This one is a Google doc one but it's the same version. Um, and then we also have a help center. So if you select that, um, the help center isn't as much focused on the accessibility features, um, but it does kind of go through a couple of different things that could be connected with accessibility um, or how to use it with your students. But I have slow internet right now, apparently. And Matt, just so you know, um, you have been given the offer to have someone help you with, um, with a word bank 
So I think that's something that came up on one of your other webinars, but um, I let Diane know that you can follow up with her and then see where we go from there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I love the idea of a uh, word bank. Well, feel free to send Matt your questions or, or um, things that you come to think of later. You know, we encourage you to go to MathShare, sign in, sign up, um, do some problem, uh, example problems, or, and even assign them to your students at this point. We'd love to hear your feedback and love to hear your questions. Um, I have nothing else, Matt. I don't know if you do. And he may be frozen. So with that, I want to thank everyone for joining the call today. And again, please let us know if you have any questions and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot.